Welcome to my podcast, What the Fuck Spirit. If you made it past that name, this is going to be the podcast for you. This is going to be a no holds barred, no bullshit, open and honest conversation with Maria Leggett, and that's me, about all things spiritual. It's time to begin talking in an open and honest way about what spirituality is and what it is not. We're going to discuss all things woo-woo, witchcraft, spiritual, medium versus psychic, energy healing, light work, shadow work, and any other bullshit that people want you to believe because it keeps them comfortable. It is time for you to grow. Let's go. You are about to listen to a recording where two friends sat down together on one evening and chose to do their quite legal medical marijuana together to relieve their own separate issues and decided to have a philosophical conversation while they were doing it. And the recording was running. And so some of these podcasts may be 15 minutes and some of them may be 20 minutes or longer. It depends on how random the thoughts were. So sit back, relax, listen to, and enjoy the experience between these two amazing friends, which is me and my friend Jacob slash Jackie O, who is an amazing Ruby girl from Dayton, Ohio. You know, it's amazing to me. Just the things that we've been through in our life and experience, right? Because you're talking about blackout. Are you recording right now? <laughs> you're talking about blackout, you? Yeah. So there was this time. <clears throat> there was this um, sleeping medication that they would give people. And when you gave it to them, they would, like, go to sleep and not remember anything. I don't think they prescribe it much anymore. Oh, the one that was, like, making people sleepwalk and stuff. Yes. What was it called? I what, don't know. I don't remember. Was it Lunesta? No, 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 no. It was before that. It had the that uh, butterfly on the commercial, the little, like, No, green. Lunesta has the butterfly. <laughs> oh, I thought it was that one. I don't know. I don't remember the name of it, but here's the thing. So they gave me this stuff because I was having trouble sleeping mm-hmm. back when I had bipolar 2 disorder, taking medication, blah, blah, blah. So they gave me this stuff to knock me out because I was not sleeping. And <laughs> I woke up the following morning. I had this really weird dream about driving my daughter somewhere and it, we almost got into an accident and she was like yelling at me, whatever. And the dream sucked and then I fell back to sleep. I woke up in the morning and my daughter wouldn't even talk to me. And I'm like, what, what is wrong with you? Why are you so mad? You almost killed me last night. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was out, I mean, blacked out after this medication. I remember nothing. Got in my car, drove my daughter and her boyfriend back to his house, dropped him off. And I guess on the way home, I didn't realize I was sleeping. Yeah. She goes, you fell asleep at the wheel and you almost, it was really bad. And only because she screamed at me and like hit me did I like wake up in the car. Oh. Yeah. And apparently I got us back home and I don't remember any of that until the next morning. Oh my goodness. I know. I was like, that's pretty bad. That's crazy. It is. The first time I ever blacked out from drinking was I was at a drag show. And I was the MC of the evening. And so at the bar I was working at, they would do like two numbers back to back and take a longer break. And then come back for like one final number for all the queens. If you were the MC, you did two. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was like halfway through the break. And I was like a little tipsy. And I really, what was always really weird to me that night is, like, I went from, like, nothing to, like, gone in, like, no time. Wow. Um, but anyways, that was a little spooky. <laughs> I remember going to go get the queens who were in the show with me and being like, hey, I'm going to go change so we can start this final set. And I walk backstage, and that is the last thing I remember until I have a little, like, blip memory memory of me being in the bathroom that was in the dressing room and I'm like hugging the toilet. <laughs> oh, that's not something you and want I have to like remember. My, easy. I have like my wig glamorously over one shoulder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you couldn't get that wig dirty. No, no, no. And I was screaming at my ex at the time. I was like, no one can see me like this. This is terrible. And, 
<laughs> and they go, um, what do they say to me? They're like, it's three o'clock in the morning. No one's in this bar. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> So I made him go unlock the side door that you're not supposed to open to sneak me out the side because I'm, in my mind, I'm a celebrity. So I have to. <laughs> yes. You got to block it. No. The paparazzi. Put on the shades and the hat. <laughs> Let me go sneak. Mm-hmm. Yep. You see, it's that sneaky thing about you that you're like, Jackie O. But what the scary part was is that the next day I messaged the bar owner and I'm like, I am so sorry. I don't know how the show went. Like, I totally blacked out. I feel really bad. Blah, 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 blah. And they responded and they said, we had no idea. You did a great job. <laughs> oh, my like, God. <laughs> I'm like, that's terrifying. <laughs> that is terrifying. <clears throat> that's so funny. We had no idea. Yep. I mean, most people wouldn't have even called them to say, I'm so sorry. They would have just waited <laughs> for the phone to ring. Do you hate me or do you love me still? <laughs> no, I felt like it was my fault. Because I, like, I woke up the next day and I was like, what happened? That would be scary. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I ever, I did do that voluntarily once. I was, oh my God. It was after my, it was after my third divorce. And, now mind you, I want, I want the first two, everybody to know that the first divorce was like four months. And the second one was seven months. So you can't really count those as marriages. Anyway. And so I had, I lived in Jersey at the time and I came out to Ohio on vacation and I went with my brother and his wife at the time and he was a bouncer at a bar. So we all went to this bar and I just got absolutely shwasted. <laughs> I must have been 29, 30. I mean, I was shwasted. <laughs> I had to go, I got sick and I remember walking into the bathroom and then I remember that I'm already seated with my legs wide open so I could get sick in between them <laughs> and then I, that's all I remember and then I my brother was like banging because he was the bouncer at the bar he always had to sweep him out and like way off in the distance because I was so drunk I could hear them say hey dude your sisters nobody can find her we think she's in the bathroom. He's like, I'll go get her. And I don't think much about it. And then I can hear him like, fling <laughs> open the bathroom door. And I was so wasted. I just, I had no wherewithal, no nothing. I just could not figure out what was going on. And so he comes in and he's knocking on the door, banging on my stall door. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no comprehension, no nothing. And, uh, he says, are you in there? Are you in there? And I'm like, yep. Well, he had to send my sister-in-law or him. Somebody came up in, unlocked the stall door, and he had to come in and clean me up, pull my drawers back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know. <laughs> and, but do you remember all that happening? Uh, most of it, yeah. I mean, it's not the same as blacking out, I know. I've only got one story like that, and I already told it. That's... I don't know. It's weird. Like, where do you think that decision-making part of us goes? I was just getting ready to say, where did your soul go while that was going yeah. on? Yeah. Like, was there an emergency on their home planet? I mean, there's still something there doing it. But oh, yeah. We're totally gone. Absolutely. Because when I blacked out and did that show, I did two whole performances and hosted on the microphone while other queens performed and did their thing. And it's like, I don't know anything that happened. <laughs> well, but here, so then here begs the question, did you really black out or did your family decide they just needed to have a conversation with you? Hmm. And so you're only open enough for them to get you when you're that drunk and when you have to keep talking to them. I mean, think about that. And by family, you mean... <laughs> <laughs> Not the human skin forms. I don't know. Because if that were the case, I feel like I would come out of it with some kind of information or like knowing. You know what I mean? 
Do you remember being in an energetic form? Like when I was blacked out? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Like any other time. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe like in the context of like really vivid dreams. You know, because I, I remember having a lot of dreams, especially when I was younger, where you could like jump and travel great distances. You know what I mean? Yeah. Vivid dreams where you're going off and doing those things. No different than when you're blacking out because they need to get your attention and you're not falling asleep. Hmm. Just saying. <laughs> Interesting. And don't ask me to repeat that phrase. I don't think I could if I saved my soul. Hmm. I mean, think about that. Well, I am. That's why I stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, bitch. <laughs> But what are they grabbing your attention for? If it's something that your soul needs to know because something happened, they're going to come and tell it. Boom, boom, boom. Hmm. And it's like, it's like having, it's like having a podcast and it's being recorded and you just hit pause. <laughs> right? It right. was, it was live for you in that moment until you hit pause. You went and did something else and you came back and you hit play. To the times when you went and did something else, you blacked out. From my perspective, in that moment when it happens, like, I have no recollection of, like, and that's, a, like, that's the spooky part, is that you, like, function and do all this stuff mm -hmm. that you don't know that you're even doing. You have no awareness of it. You don't remember any of it. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, I hit a point, and then I'm totally gone, and then, or was, and then... There's like a little blip where I came out of it and then went back into it. And then I wake up the next day. And it's like no matter how much you sit in meditation or do, like you can't connect anything into that spaces. Because like where does that piece of you go? Like what's in control? Mm-hmm. You know? Well, your whole soul doesn't reside in your body. Oh, Yeah. Because it's got all the little fractions, so mm -hmm. maybe go into one of those other versions of yourself. It's interesting. Or maybe just go back to where it's not complicated to exist. Yeah. Where you've learned the lessons and you're just basking in the joy of everybody else. <laughs> Realizing what an amazing soul you are and all that shit that you put up with on Earth. All those many times that you went there. Yeah. Things to ponder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a difference between being around someone who has ingested alcohol, right? Where it's been mm -hmm. fermented and its vibration changed from its original intention. And then talking to someone who has imbibed in whatever they would like, that's plant medicine. There's a very big difference in the vibration between the two. Mm-hmm. Which I always, I mean, I never even thought twice about it, right? Because when I started doing this work all those years ago, well, not all those years ago, eight years ago, but whatever, um, spirit was super clear. No drinking when you do this work, none. Mm -hmm. And so That's I didn't even my think. my experience, too. I can have, like, a glass of wine or something. It, like, it shuts down. Turns Absolutely. Off. Yeah. When I'm around someone who's doing plant medicine or if I'm just doing it legally, of course, I just, the connection to me feels stronger and easier. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I do it for a living talking to spirit, but it just feels so much more released and spirit's like, there you go. And I'm like, okay, so here's the thing. It, it's basically a weed, which is why they call it weed to begin with. Um, if it can grow readily anywhere, why can we not just use it? Spirit was super clear to say, listen, this earth grows everything that you need to heal your body. You use it to heal you. You use it to heal your, to heal other people. And it's through your intention with your emotions and your feelings Yeah, that you begin to let go and just accept that connection. Yeah. I get that kind of like weirdness around the approach of it because like I, whew, I grew up with my stepdad was the uh, drug officer for my city that we lived in. <laughs> so 
like the dog lived at our house and all that other stuff. And so it was always from this perspective that those were things were talked about with us as being very bad and it would invite all these bad things in. And if you were even like around it or near it, you would go to jail. Um, so that establishes a lot of fear. <laughs> oh yeah. Around it. And, um, now I have a medical card and even like, the first couple times I would go to the dispensary and like perfectly legal <laughs> doing what like the right things <laughs> I, feel like... I would like walk in and I'm like oh my god just like <laughs> I know you're hiding like hiding the bag close to you well and <laughs> the worst part is, is you walk in because I have my medical card too and the worst part is, is you walk in and you're like oh my god who am I gonna recognize and then you realize um, they've got one too yeah <laughs> why are you getting all paranoid about it I was like oh yeah yeah that's yeah, weird. I would go in there and like have my head like headphone in like one ear. It's like, like halfway not pay attention to people. It's so interesting to me to look back and listen to this entire rant that Jake and I went on for two and a half hours. And I don't know how much of it I'm actually going to be able to edit and put into podcasts. In my mind, we had brilliant moments. And um, listening back to it in retrospect, that's not exactly the case. I think we had more fun because there was, um, it's interesting. I really feel like there was a mental level of conversation between Jake and I that didn't come out verbally. So I really feel like there were ideas (laughs) exchanged between us that we knew what we were talking about but now that I'm listening to it the words weren't there and I'm really surprised about that um and so this lets me know that when we are using plant medicine when we are around other people sometimes you don't need to speak because your higher self kicks in and you can just telepathically have a conversation with someone not beneficial when you want it for a podcast but there it is And so there's reasons why people do things together, right? Where you do plant medicine and you do ceremony together because they're a collective conscious that comes in and settles down into the group around you. And you're all tapping into that and you're tapping into it so easily because you don't know not to. Your human ego has been told to piss off by this beautiful plant that says okay ego go take a rest let my higher self speak and it doesn't matter to me if it's psilocybin which is still illegal in ohio but if it's psilocybin or thc it doesn't really matter you're being opened up to this beautiful consciousness that's out there and you can perceive information in a way that you cannot while you're still in full on 100% ego form because your ego has a job here on the earth and that ego is here to keep you safe it's here to keep you alive and it's here to remind you that you are a human now when you don't particularly like being in your body being reminded that you're human really kind of sucks and so being able to find ways and this is why a lot of people wind up with anxiety and panic attacks and because they don't like being in their body because something unsafe has happened to them when they were in their body so being able to medically use thc to help your body to chill so that you can deal with past trauma so that you can deal with things that have happened helps you to actually heal and that's the whole reason why thc has become legal in so many places i really wish that they would federally mandate this so that everybody has access to it um ohio just passed last year in the vote to make it legal um for people without a medical card of course there's different levels of thc you're going to be able to get without one i am maintaining my medical card because i used to get horrible horrible migraines and i went a few months without thc thinking maybe i was okay because they were all gone and all the migraines came back and so thc has really been a way for me to work through my migraines and to work through all of the body pain associated with fibromyalgia and I go to a dispensary in Dayton called Pure Ohio Wellness, and I love going there. They are such nice people, so kind and so helping. 
And all you have to do is go in and explain to them, this is what my body is feeling. This is what's happening. And they will gather together and try to find the best product for you. Now that is customer service because they're not invested in what brand or whatever it is. Now you do the opposite and go to a doctor that you're paying all this money to go see And you're getting information from them saying, hey, we want you to take this antidepressant. But the reason why they're pushing that antidepressant on you is because they're getting a commission off of the sales for that antidepressant, whether or not it really is the right one for you. They just happen to be getting a kickback from it. I'm sure that I'm not going to make a whole lot of people happy with this, but that's the way it is. That's the truth of it. My dad was a nurse for 30 years and I worked in the pharmaceutical company. When I was younger and in the left brain world and I did printing and I printed their PIs, the patient information, you know, those thin pieces of paper that are inside the medication bottles. Those are PIs, those are patient information. And I used to have to print those along with many other things that I used to do for a pharmaceutical company. And I'm telling you now, pharmaceutical companies are there trying to trick you into believing that you need a product because of X, Y, Z. Here is the perfect explanation. And yes, I'm kind of segueing here. And no, I'm not under THC, but this is just where my brain is going right now. So when I went to go work for one of these companies and they sell Excedrin and Excedrin back then was my best friend because I had migraines so often I was taking Excedrin quite regularly. And so when I got there, I was so excited. They used to give out free packets of Excedrin. And then I found out they had the free packets of Excedrin migraine. And I was so excited. I'm like, oh, my God, yes, this is exactly the same thing. And one of my coworkers comes over to me and says, hey, Shell, let me, let me tell you something. I'm like, what? And they said, I want you to know that regular Excedrin and Excedrin for migraines are the exact same formula. There is nothing any different about them. The only reason why is allowed to advertise Excedrin for migraines as migraines specifically because they did a clinical study that proved that that exact same formula as Excedrin works for migraines. So because it passed that clinical trial, they were now legally allowed to advertise it as Excedrin for migraines. And, and I don't know if this is the case anymore, Excedrin for migraines is more expensive than regular Excedrin. This is what pharmaceutical companies do to you to get you to spend more money. Technically, it's not a lie, right? Excedrin does work for migraines. They found a way to market it so they could absolutely hit the people who were having migraines because migraines have become such a big thing in the last 10 plus years. And being one of those migraine sufferers where I would have to go and do all these things in order to get a shot in the butt of a medication that didn't work, and then I'd wind up with a cluster migraine twice a year, I'd have to go to the hospital, and the only thing that stopped my cluster migraine was Dilaudid. That's disgusting. That's how bad I was that Dilaudid was the only medication that could kill my cluster migraine. Not the steroids, not nothing, only Dilaudid. And we found that out completely by accident because I I was in so much pain. The doctor's like, let's just try this. Boom. And it worked. So I can use THC, which is non-habit forming for the way that I use it. I eat half of a gummy every single night to stave it away and to help my body to feel better. Or I cannot do anything, take a whole bunch of Excedrin for migraine, which is going to rip up my stomach and wind up in the hospital twice a year getting Dilaudid shoved into my body, which is an opioid. Now, come on, which is better for you, the THC or the opioid? Hands down, I'm taking the THC. There's a reason why this is happening. Pharmaceutical companies are the reason why THC is not fully legal. They don't have anything to benefit from it. And now that states are getting taxes and things from it, THC programs are helping the states. So... And what's interesting is for me to sit here and get up on this soapbox talking about how THC is great, literally, I am not even remotely kidding you. 10 years ago, I would have told you it's a gateway drug. It's this, it's that. It'll get you into all of these things. And it's because that's what was drilled into my head because of what I experienced in my own family and what I saw in my own family with addiction. And addiction is in my family and it has negatively impacted me in massive ways. And at the same time, 
the person who had the addiction, I love them so much. I was willing to do almost anything to help them. And we need to start paying attention to addiction in this world. We need to start recognizing that addiction comes from a mental place. And it starts at a mental place, but it becomes very physical. And we need to take better care of the people in our lives who have addictions. I lost my very first baby, who's my nephew. I was 12 when he was born. And he was the first baby that I ever got to help take care of. And I lost him to this addiction. And so I was the person who would have said, THE was the gateway. Don't do it. It's disgusting. It's bad. Blah, blah, blah. And it's not the truth. It's just what I was conditioned to believe. And now I know better. Now I know that my body is more comfortable and happier and more relaxed when I'm able to use my medical marijuana to help my body because I've taken fibromyalgia medication. Let me tell you something. I took Lyrica and gained 50 pounds, 50, yeah, five, zero, 50 pounds. And I'm going to tell you something. My fat ass still hasn't been able to lose that 50 pounds. And, you know, my body's just at a point now where it's gotten used to it. And I just don't even care anymore. But I'm not going to take medication that's going to force me to gain more weight, that's going to force me to do things. And it didn't even work. I was still in pain. And so now that I'm able to find something that can handle my migraines, handle the fibromyalgia pain, and it's something that's in my body and out, right? The effects of it are in and out fairly quickly. I don't have to build up a tolerance. I don't have to take it at the same time every day. I don't have to do any of this stuff. I just take a nice gummy before I go to sleep. I never even feel the effect of the gummy because I lay down, I fall asleep, and that gummy takes effect so that I can be comfortable all night long. Now, my medical doctor, my THC doctor told me it's much better if you use flour in the, there are these little things that you can put flour in and I can't smoke. Smoking just burns my lungs. It's not my gig. And yes, I know I lose part of it through my liver, but you know, five milligrams of a gummy works for me really, really well. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you for listening to this episode of What the Fuck Spirit with Shelly Leggett and Jacob Sams. We had such a good time together and we have more episodes coming. Enjoy and I can't wait to see you for the next one.